All right, I got this NPCNC build. It moves, it cuts. You were able to follow the entire build process live here on YouTube. Last week I was out filming a few projects and when I got back, I wanted to actually tune this thing in and get it to cut well. Because what we were seeing on the last live stream was that there was an enormous amount of chatter and just bounciness in the tool head, especially in this aluminum cut, but also already in MDF. I mean, in the end it did work, but I know even from flimsier machines that that shouldn't be that way, but somehow this machine was just not rigid enough to mill into the material. And yeah, I did build this one slightly larger than they normally are, but what I was noticing was that the belt and the way the belt was mounted introduced a lot of flex into the drive system. Like, I can easily stretch the entire belt assembly by a millimeter or two, even with a zip tie as tightly tensioned as possible. Now, in the comments, you guys have already suggested a bunch of different areas where my machine could also have issues, like these long M8 bolts that are used in the carriage back here, uh, having a smooth shaft instead of being threaded all the way through, which could have the carriage flex more than usual. But I wanted to go step by step and fix the obvious issues first and try to understand the MPC and see a bit more during all that. And I thought it would be a good start and an easy fix for the belt with a new printed part, this one, that would directly clamp the belt with no zip ties, just like that. But it wasn't that easy. While I was already drawing a new part, I wanted to go ahead and work on a few other challenges that I ran into during the build, like the fact that there are only a handful of size options available for tubing, none of which are really as cheaply available here as metal conduit is in the US, the fact that almost none of the nut traps were grabbing the lock nuts properly and it had to jam a screwdriver in there to hold them while tightening them, and a few of the parts only seemed to be made for imperial sized hardware from the start, not metric. So I started the Fusion 360, created a new parametric design and drew up the first part, one of these corner pieces with adjustable wall thickness, screw size, raw diameter, and of course it has the belt just pushed in sideways with no zip ties or anything. Worked great, so I tweeted about it, was like, hey, I created this part, if anyone wants to use it, here's the Fusion 360 design, I'm sharing this as Creative Commons Zero, aka public domain, printed, modified, included in your project, you don't even have to give credit for it, basically do whatever you want with it. And here's where it got complicated. Because Ryan of V1 Engineering, he designed the original MPC and C parts, came in and was like, Hey, Tom, you can't actually release these parts as public domain. They're a derivative work of my original parts, so you need to release them as Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial. Now, just to be clear, I didn't just import the original STL into Fusion, chop off the zip tie brace and add the belt slot. This part is designed from the ground up. I spent a couple hours on the design to work out kinks with being able to adjust the dimensions as parameters without the whole design falling apart in the process. And yeah, it does look like the original, because it fits the other original parts, and honestly there just aren't a whole lot of other options to design a part that does the job of holding a belt right here and clamping down onto a section of tubing at the same time. We'll actually get back to that later. So what followed on Twitter was two days of discussion between Ryan and me of what is a derivative design and what is not, who holds copyright to what, and what the morally right thing to do was. And you can still read the entire conversation, I've linked that below. Now, obviously I don't think this part counts as a derivative design from the original MPCNC, but what Ryan kept pointing out is that he basically considers any part a derivative of the original as long as it fits onto the other parts, because the dimensions and positions of features are the same as the original. So I was like, okay, if you're saying that any part that does the same job is a derivative and that would require me to only release my design as Creative Commons Attribution non-commercial too, then so be it, okay. But then please do respect that license and don't use my original work commercially either, including in derivatives. Now if you follow through on that line of thought, Ryan owns the copyright to this area and I own the copyright to that, and in the end nobody gets to use it. I thought holding up a mirror like this would show how ridiculous this entire thing would be, but instead Ryan accused me of wanting to destroy his MPCNC project. Like, what? So just to be clear, I started out by wanting to release my design with no restrictions for everyone to use, for the MPCNC community and for whoever wants to make the part. There's also an awesome community supporting this channel, so whenever I spend my time and design something, 
I want it to be available for as many people as possible. And for me, that means releasing as open source. A non-commercial license isn't considered open source because it comes with so many restrictions in how we can use a design. For example, in educational use, in a makerspace that, yes, usually has member fees, or in any other context where someone is making money with it, even in a really remote way. For example, me even building the MPCNC on this channel is a pretty gray area because I am using the parts in videos and live streams that, at the end of the day, put food on my table and the people who work with me. Thankfully, I do have implicit permission in that case. I have no intention of harming any project that enables people to do awesome things. In fact, I want the MPCNC to be as awesome as possible, which is why I started making modified parts in the first place. But it looks like, for the time being, the MPCNC is going to be Ryan's project alone, with him wanting control over the entire thing. And he obviously made it pretty clear that he didn't want me interfering with that by making open source compatible parts. Now there is still that little detail in copyright where if a part only has a certain shape because it has to do a certain job, copyright just doesn't apply to it. That's why, for example, your car's brake discs aren't protected by copyright from Ford or someone, because the shape they have is not design in the artsy way, it's, it's purely function, and copyright only applies to art and creative work in the widest sense. I'm pretty sure that aside from the MPCNC logo on here, these parts are very much functional too, and I'm certain that all things considered, I did nothing wrong, but I'm going to respect the fact that Ryan doesn't want this. Unfortunately, this means I won't be spending any more time on this MPCNC. The only thing left to do is to take this machine apart. I'm sure I'll find a new home for the spindle, do it electronics and all of that. Again, my intent was to make this machine better, more flexible, more accessible, and of course I don't care if this belt clip thing makes it into the official design or even ends up being sold as the MPCNC. I mean, after all, this design was CC0 to start, and that license even includes use in projects that have a more restrictive license too. So, while I'm unbuilding this machine, I want to say thank you to my supporters over on Patreon and here on YouTube as well. This month, a shout out goes to Aleph Objects, Adam Green, Ken Graham, Kurt Vobbles, John Berry, Robert Baum, Enim Creator, James Cock, Philip Gock, Neil Youngberg, Brian Raker, Andre, Jimmy Lee, Matthew Oswald, Dorian Gray, Olivares, Mike McGee, James C. Foley, Jonathan Marlin, Marcus Harms, Andy Fair, Robert Hornberg, Jeffrey Nikolajic, Phyllis Studer, Christopher Day, Rudolf Vaughn, Paul Arden, William Devine, and Francisco Peebles, and everyone else who's directly supporting the channel on Patreon, through YouTube memberships, or even just watches and shares my videos. So, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.